A rational number is a set of numbers that can be written as a fraction, where both the numerator and denominator are integers, so positive or negative whole numbers, and the denominator cannot equal zero. All of these numbers are considered rational numbers. We can write this as a fraction 7 over 1, 0 0.4 repeating is 4 over 9, and we know 75 hundredths can be reduced to 3 over 4. So a rational expression, rational is our fraction, expression is a polynomial. So we're going to have variables either in the numerator, in the denominator, or in both. Now we know that our denominator cannot be equal to zero. This is three, so that's okay. This x is a variable representing any number. So x can be any number, but it cannot be zero. What would x have to be here that would make that denominator zero? That value, negative one, is not allowed. So what we call non-permissible values are what are the values that are not allowed that would make that denominator equal to zero? NPV stands for non-permissible value. What are the values not allowed that would make that denominator zero? So we already established if we just see the variable, x cannot equal zero. That is our non-permissible value. If we have a number on the bottom, there is no non-permissible value. You don't even have to look at the numerator. It's only the denominator that we want to make sure doesn't equal zero. So then in this denominator, you're going to say, what could a be that would make this whole thing zero? Well, we know because we're multiplying, a cannot equal zero, and we're going to circle our non-permissible value. Now, you may recognize in our next one, and again, we're only looking at the denominator, what number here would make the denominator zero? Well, it's going to be four. If you weren't sure what the number was, what you could do is say, okay, four minus x, the denominator, cannot equal zero. So if we move over the x, we can see that x cannot equal four, and then we're going to circle that. Same thing with the next one. So we're gonna take the denominator, and we're gonna set it so that it cannot equal zero. I'm going to move over the three, subtract three from both sides, and then we're going to divide out the leading coefficient. So x cannot equal three halves. And you can even test this. If you put this back in, two times negative three halves plus three would give you a value of zero. So every time we're gonna set this so it cannot equal zero, and then algebraically we're going to look for that value of x. Now when you see something like this, and we have two variables in it, what we're going to do is we're going to factor the denominator denominator, look for a greatest common factor, or is it a difference of squares, and then we're going to set each factor equal to zero. So I'm going to begin right by removing my greatest common factor of 2x, and then 2x times x gets us back to the first term, 2x times negative 3 gets us back to the second term. Because each factor contains a variable, we have to set each factor so it cannot equal zero. So when I do that, I can see that we can't have zero in this term, we can't have a positive three in this term. There are two non-permissible values in this denominator, x cannot equal zero, x cannot equal three. And then you can always substitute them back. If I put a zero here, that's gone. If I put a zero here, that's gone. Zero minus zero is zero, not allowed. If I put a three, three squared is nine, nine times 2 is 18, and then if I put a 3 here, it's going to be minus 18. That's going to give us a value of 0, not allowed. So these are my non-permissible values. Every other value is allowed or is permissible. And then the last thing we really want to understand before we get into the meat and potatoes of rationals is that of equivalency. So we know with fractions, if we multiply the numerator and denominator by the same number, we end up with an equivalent fraction. So the reason that is, is because 2 over 2 has a value of 1. When I multiply by 1, I'm not changing the original value. We could also divide. So what number could we divide both 4 and 6 by? Well, if we divide each by 2, we can see that 2 thirds is also going to be equivalent. Or we could multiply the numerator by 10 to get 40, multiply the denominator by 10 to get 60. As long as we are multiplying or dividing the numerator and denominator by the same number, we will produce an equivalent fraction. Similarly, if I have a rational expression, I have to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same factor. It can be either a number or a variable or both in order to get an equivalent expression. For example, I'm going to multiply every term by two and we can end up with this. I can divide every term by two and end up with this. 
Or I could multiply all three of the original terms by 4x and end up with this. All three of these expressions are equivalent to each other. They're also equivalent to the original expression. Make sure that you're dividing or multiplying every single term by the same number or variable or both, and you will have equivalent expressions.